Did you know that's how you came into grace? Well, let me ask you my litmus test. I've said, I ask this to people all over the world. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of us were saved in what we now are so proudly calling mixture churches? If I were to ask you to raise your hand, outside of some of our young people, it's usually about 99% of the adults in the house will go, yep, yep, I was saved in a mixture church. And yet we're spending all of our time coming against the man and the message coming out of the mixture church when we came out of the mixture church. Why? Because at some point... We, kept look, we started looking for the Jesus that we had lost, and we found him. So the reality is just keep looking for and waiting for that presence of the Holy Spirit. I, I have a belief that even in the mixture church, Jesus is doing a great work. I, I, how many of you realize that every time they gather together in his name, he's there too? You know what? I mean, he may not be excited about it. But no, 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 I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. <laughs> he may... He may he may not be excited about our meetings. I don't know. But he's there. And the reality is, is that, that prior to the cross, Jesus is saying, the Spirit's upon me. You can reject me as a man. You can reject my heritage. You can reject my parents. You can reject my lack of formal education. You can reject the fact that I'm a carpenter, not a theologian. You can reject all that stuff about me, but you can't reject who I am in the Spirit. So really, prior to the cross, to blaspheme the Holy Ghost was to deny Christ's authority. As a man, he said, listen, that's unforgivable because that's what I'm here for is to show you the power and the authority of God. There's no, if you don't receive that, what is there to receive? But what about the other side of the cross? Because the other side of the cross is what worries us. It's the other side of the cross that we live on. It's that side of the cross that has people saying, pastor, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm afraid that I may have blasphemed the Holy Spirit and I, I don't know that I can be used of God. You know, I, I, was, I was ignorant, I was young. I, you've heard the arguments. I've heard the arguments from people all over, all different age groups, all different demographics that say, you know, I haven't felt the Lord in a long time. I want to give you a little hint. The Lord put this in my heart last night in Park Hills, Missouri. I want to share this again. Listen, I think one of the greatest lies that the enemy has pulled over God's people is that they have no ability to hear from God. Almost every Christian I've ever met has had a moment of crisis in their walk with God where they went, Pastor, I think the heavens are brass. God doesn't hear me. I'm not sure my prayers are getting past the ceiling. How do I know that God is hearing my prayers? And the enemy has come to you and give you 10 reasons why God's not listening to you anymore. Most of them are performance-based. He's going, because you did this, 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 and this. You do this. You watch this. You think this. You say this. You hang out with them people. You expect God's going to hear you. And we've fought that battle too, so we'll run up to an old-fashioned altar somewhere and say, God, I'm going to give it all down. I'm going to be crucified again. Maybe now you'll start to hear my prayer. And the reality is, is that he never stopped hearing the Jesus that was inside of you. But we listened to the voice of the enemy. It made us believe that God wouldn't hear us. And so here, here's, here's the point. I think that so many believers are so afraid they don't know how to hear the voice of God, but the devil, is a, he's really good at only one thing, and that's lying. Listen. You were so good at hearing the voice of God the day you got saved. You were lost. You were a sinner. And then someone told you about Jesus, and you heard the voice of God. And you responded. Now I'm going to ask you this. How were you so good at it, and you were lost, and now you're so bad at it, and you're saved? <laughs> The reality is you're being lied to by the enemy. You're very good at hearing the voice of God because the voice of God has never stopped talking to you. You were good at it when you were lost. You're even better at it now that you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And so I don't want you to spend one more minute of one more day thinking that you don't know how to hear from God. Well, then, pastor, how do I know it's God? Just keep moving forward. That's what God's doing in your life.